this video, we are going to solve exercise seven from worksheet two. We have to find the singularities of the function f of z, which is written here. It's a function which is a bit complicated. And uh, we want here to see a bit all the techniques uh, we have uh, explored in exercise one to find singularities. We want to determine the type of singularities. So if they are removable, if they are poles, if they are essential. And then we want to compute the order of the poles. So when, when is the function f then not holomorphic? So the function f is holomorphic for all z such that what does that to happen? So you see here you have z minus i at the denominator. So z minus i must be different from zero. So this means z different from i. So this is the first thing. The second thing you see you have also here at, at the denominator of this fraction three terms, so cosinus of z minus one, this should also be different from zero. And you know that this happens if and only if z is two pi times k, for k an integer. Sorry, for z different from these guys, okay. Then we have z plus one different from zero, so z must be different from minus one. And finally, z cubed minus one must also be different from zero. And uh, here we want to find the roots of this um, polynomial, so we know that we have the factorization z minus one times z minus z zero times z minus z one. This must be different from zero. So what are z zero and z one? These are two complex numbers we already, we already saw. This minus one minus, or maybe it was plus i square root of three divided by two and z1 was minus one minus i square root of three divided by two. Okay, so this means then that z must be different from one, z must be different from z zero, and z must be different from z one. So summing up, we see that F has the singularities I, two pi K for K an integer minus one. Then one Z zero and Z1. Okay, so these are all the, the singularities of the function f. So we are going to analyze now um, the, um, the singularities uh, one by one. So maybe the, um, the let's start with the, 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 the first one. So I, So the singularity I. So in this case, you see that uh, the problem is inside the cosinus function. And uh, the first thing we notice is, is that the cosinus func the cosinus of two divided by Z minus I has an essential singularity at I. Also, let's notice first this fact. So 
um, we know that cosinus of two divided by z minus i has an essential singularity at z equal i. Why is this, is this so? Because we can compute the, the Lorentz series expansion of this function, so cosinus of two divided by z minus i as the Lorentz series expansion, which is obtained from the, Lorentz, from the power series expansion of the cosinus, so this is minus one to the n uh, divided by two uh, n factorial. And then now here comes two divided by z minus i to the two n. Okay, so this shows Uh, this is the Lorentz series expansion of this function. And then we see that this expansion has infinitely many terms. with z minus i to the m, where m is, an, is a negative integer. So this shows that um, the singularity is essential. So cosinus of two divided by z minus i as an essential singularity at z equal to i. So this is the first information, but now we want to to deal with a function f, not with a function cosinus of two divided by z minus i. So let's then write the cosinus of two divided by z minus i in terms of f of z. So what we have to do, we have to take this part here and put it on the other side. So cosinus of two divided by z minus i is equal to f of z times, let's uh, write this maybe first as g of z, where g of z is the function z cubed plus z squared minus z minus one. And above we have cosinus of z minus one, z plus one, z cubed minus one squared. Okay, now what we are going to do, we are going to uh, argue by, um, by contradiction. So suppose that f does not have an essential singularity at z equal to i. Now, so we want to argue by contradiction. The end, we, we were to show that f indeed has an essential singularity at z equal to i. But let's suppose that this does not happen. Then f of z as a Lorentz series expansion, which starts which start with some with some uh, element. So maybe here we have a m.
plus terms of higher order. in M, not where M is some integer. This is now the Lorentz series, Lorentz series expansion of F. But now what we know about the function, the function G, so actually the function G now we are going to see is holomorphic in a neighborhood of z equal to i. So this is the first thing. So second thing, we know that g is holomorphic in a neighborhood of z equal to i. Why is that so? The only thing we have to check is that the denominator is different from zero at z equal to i. Because i to the third power plus i squared minus i minus one. What is this? This is minus i minus one minus i minus one. So this is minus two times i plus one. So this is different from zero. So this means that the function g is holomorphic to the neighborhood of z equal to i. And this tells me that g of z also has some power series expansion of the type B n z minus sorry z zero but here z zero we said this was i no? so also maybe I correct it above here this was i so we are doing the the expansion at the, the point i so this is B n z minus i to some n and then we have some order z minus i to some higher order. This is for some n natural number. But then this implies that f times g of uh, z this can be written as am times bn times z minus i to the m plus n plus terms of order smaller than m. Sorry, of order uh, bigger than m plus, plus n. But this is a contradiction because f times g is the cosinus of two divided by z minus i. And we saw that this function has infinitely many terms um, with uh, a negative uh, exponent. So this is a contradiction. because cosinus of two divided by z minus i has infinitely many terms in the Lorentz expansion. With negative exponent. While we see from this, we see from this um, formula here that the only, <clears throat> the only uh, terms in the Lorentz expansion start from exponent m plus n. Now this is a contradiction because we know that 
cosinus of 2 divided by z minus, minus i has instead infinitely many terms with negative exponent. Okay, so this is a contradiction. So this means that f cannot, um, can, uh, cannot have an expansion like this. So this means that f has an essential singularity. So the Lorentz series expansion of, of f has infinitely many terms uh, with negative exponent. Okay, so this shows that f has essential singularity. at z equal to i. Okay, so this then finishes the discussion for the first singularity, the singularity in z equal to i. And now let's, let's go and, uh, and see what happens for the singularities at two pi k for k in z. So in this case, uh, you see these terms this term here, cosine of z minus one, is equal uh, to zero. And so we want to expand using a power series to see uh, how much does this term vanish. So now the singularities z equal to two pi k for k an integer. So in this case, cosinus of z minus one can be expanded around the point two pi k. Uh, maybe let's uh, remove this z here. The singularity, the singularity is two pi k, k z. So here we can put cosinus of two pi k minus one plus the derivative of cosinus, which is minus sinus at two pi k times z minus two pi k. And you see here we are getting all zeros. So this is the first term here is zero, but also the second term here is zero. Now, so we are, we are still getting all uh, zero terms. So we have to go to higher order in the Taylor expansion. So the next order is one half of the second derivative. And the second derivative is minus cosinus of two pi k times z minus two pi k squared. And now you see that this is this term is non zero because this here is equal to one. So all the other terms now we can neglect. So the other terms are of order bigger than two. So we find in the end, what do we find is that the cosinus of z minus one is equal to minus one half z minus two pi k squared plus other elements of order z minus two pi k squared or higher than, than z minus two pi k squared. And um, now we can also factor out z minus two pi k squared, so z minus two pi k squared minus one half plus some term which contains only positive powers of z minus two pi k. Very good, so now we have uh, this uh, expression and we can use it to rewrite f of z. So now f of z is cosinus of two divided by z minus i. And then above we have z cubed plus z squared minus z minus one. And below 
instead of cosinus of z minus one, we can put this formula that we found, z minus two pi k. minus one half plus some reminder. Times the other terms, which are uh, z plus one and z cube minus one squared. Very good. So now you see here that we have this power of z minus two pi k squared. And now all the other, all the other terms, they, uh, they form a function which is non-zero at two pi k. So let's, let's observe this. So I can write this as one over z minus two pi k squared. And then now we have some reminder function g of z where this function g of z is cosinus of two divided by z minus i times z cube plus z squared minus z minus one. And here below minus one plus i order, z plus one, z cube minus one squared. So now the function g is holomorphic. G is holomorphic around two pi k. Now since what is g of two pi k? Uh, um, this is cosinus of two divided by two pi k minus i times two pi k cube plus two pi k squared minus two pi k minus one. And below we get here minus one half and here two pi k plus one, two pi k cube minus one squared. So now we, so th this is uh, now a com some complex number because the denominator here does not vanish. So the denominator here um, is uh, different from zero. But now what we want to show is that also that g of two pi k is also different from zero. And, and for this, we just need to observe that um, the cosinus of two divided by two pi k minus i is different from zero. And uh, what is uh, at the numerator of the fraction is also different from zero, two pi k, two pi k cube plus two pi k squared minus two pi k minus one. So um, want to show G of two pi K different from zero. And the first thing is that cosinus of two divided by two pi K minus I is different from zero since two over two pi k minus i is not equal to pi over two plus h i for h an integer. Although, so these are the values where the cosinus vanish, but you see that these um, over pi k minus i can never be a number of the type pi over two plus h times pi because this number is not, uh, this number here on the, on the left is not a real number. So this is true. It is true because 
2 over 2 pi k minus i uh, is not a real number. Uh, while the pi over 2 plus h times pi is a real number. Okay, so this is true. Then the other thing we have to check is that 2 pi k cubed plus 2 pi k squared minus 2 pi k minus 1 this is different from 0. And to do this, maybe it's better to uh, start factorizing uh, polynomial to find the root of the polynomial. So if we can show that 2 pi k is not a root of the polynomial, then we are done. So how do we factorize this polynomial? So let's factorize z cubed plus z squared minus z minus 1. So we, uh, we can put z squared uh, to a factor and minus 1 to factor. And so this gives us z plus 1, z squared minus 1, which can also be rewritten as z plus 1 squared times z minus 1. Okay, so we see that the roots are z equal to minus one and z equal to plus one. So surely two pi k is not, is not a root of this polynomial. So now we know that g of two pi k is different from zero. And uh, then we can use a definition to show that two pi k is a pole of order two of f. pi k is a pole of order 2 for f because the limit as z goes to 2 pi k of z minus 2 pi k squared of f of z. This is equal to the limit as z goes to 2 pi k of g of z because the definition of g of z you see here um, z minus 2 pi k squared the denominator goes away so we get here g to the 2 pi k which we saw this is different from zero okay so once again we find that uh, that um, f as a polar order 2 at 2 pi k Okay, so this is uh, treat already this, uh, the second uh, case. So now we want to treat the, the singularity, um, the other singularities, minus, minus one, one, z zero and z one. So we are going to be a bit quicker here. So how, are we going to, um, to see um, the behavior here? So let's now see the singularities. Um, singularities minus one, one, z zero and z one. So once again, f of z, was written as cosinus of two over z minus i times, and then now I, I'm going to use the factorization of the denominator that we found here. So this, you see, we can be factored like this. So let's use this factorization. So above we get z plus one squared times z minus one. And below we had cosinus of z minus one, and then z plus one times z minus one squared z minus z zero squared z minus z one squared. 
So here we see that we can do some uh, simplification. So this goes away with this and this goes away with that. So what we find in the end is cosinus of two over z minus i. Let me put also already cosinus of z here, minus one. And then here we have this fraction. So this is uh, z plus one above and below this is z minus one times z plus z zero squared z minus z one squared. Okay, so now we have to investigate the singularities minus one, one, z zero and z one. So the singularity minus one, we see here that it's uh, a removable singularity because um, we saw that z plus one that was before at the denominator now through this simplification uh, went away. So z equal to minus one is a removable singularity. Now, since now if I take the limit for z going to minus one of um, this function, And this was here a small mistake, z minus z zero. So z minus z zero squared, z minus z one squared. So when z goes to minus one, we got here um, non as complex number, this is zero. Okay, so this then shows that this is a removable singularity. Now what happens with uh, z equal to one? is a pole of order of order one. Once again, this is due to the fact that Z minus one appears here with uh, exponent one at the denominator. And the only thing we have to check is that all the rest uh, is non-zero at Z equal to one. So let's check this. So what we have to do, we have to take the limit z goes to one of cosinus of two z minus i, cosinus of z minus one, z plus one, z minus one, z minus z zero squared, z minus z one squared. And then we have to multiply by z minus one. So, what we have to check here is basically that all the rest um, is different from zero. So this is cosinus of two of one minus i divided by cosinus of one minus one. And here is two, one minus z zero squared, one minus z one squared. And you can see that this is a complex number different from from zero, basically arguing as before. So uh, the cosinus here of this number cannot be zero because this number is not pi over two plus a multiple of pi. Again, cosinus of one is different from one. And also these two numbers are different from zero because z zero and z one are different from one. So this shows that this is a pole of order one. And now we have to, um, take care of the number z0 and z and z1, but this is also um, quite easy and follow the same pattern. So z equal to z0 is a pole of order two. Uh, and once again, what, what we have to, to do, so we know that f of z is one over z minus z zero squared times 
all the other terms. So what are the other terms? Cosinus of 2z minus i, cosinus of z minus 1 times z plus 1, z minus 1, z minus z1 squared. So now this you can define as a function g of z. And the only thing you have to check is that g of z0 is different from zero. This is easy, easy to check. Because once again, z0 here uh, surely does not um, annihilate any of these uh, of these terms here. Okay, then this implies uh, that the limit as z goes to z0 of z minus z0 squared times f of z this is equal to g of z0, and this is different from zero. And this is, tells me that z equal to z0, pole of order two. And then uh, for z1, similar story. So it is a pole of order one, of order two. Um, same argument as with z equal to z0. Okay, so this is, um, um, this is the end of the exercise. So maybe a comment, you see that when you want to show that something is a pole, the, um, the way, one of the best way to do it is uh, to write a function f using this uh, decomposition where you put um, the power that you think uh, it's the good one, one over z minus z zero to the two here in front, and then you put all the rest, you put all the rest here. And then now if you know that uh, this reminder function evaluates to some complex number different from zero at z zero, then uh, using the, one of the criteria to show that uh, you have a pole of order two, you see that this uh, criteria is satisfied because this limit here is then different, is then different from, uh, from zero. Okay, thank you for your attention.